Is snow in the south a real possibility next week? I'm here to tell you there's a chance. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you to talk about the snow, the Arctic cold, and then at the end of this video, we're going to have a complete update on when the environment anyway improves when dealing with the California wildfires. So stick around to the end of the video for that. You see it right there on your screen. Modeling has been suggesting a doozy of a storm, but is it going to happen? That's what we're going to break down over the next few minutes. If you want to stay updated on this storm and all others and just the weather in general, want to hang out and have that weather conversation, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and we're going to get to it. Okay, so we're starting off looking at the 22nd, the morning of the 22nd of January, and you see a pretty ugly looking storm, snow, sleet, freezing rain all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Is it possible? It is, and I'm going to show you why. So we're going to break down a number of different models. This is the European model, and most guidance does show something here. But in order to tell this story, we're going to back up the train just a little bit. So this is, again, the morning of the 22nd. We're going to go back in time to this. What is the number one thing you need to get snow? I'll wait. Post it in the comments. It's the cold. And we are going to have cold in place because we have several fronts coming through. So this is going to be now the weekend of the 18th. So we're going to bust out the handy-dandy telestrator. We're going to get rid of those circles. And here is cold front number one slicing through. So this is what comes in on the 18th. This is going to open the door to the Arctic and allow for that pure cold air to sink all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. The one thing that we always have problems with in the south is that we oftentimes have the cold air chasing the moisture. You need that injection of colder air first and foremost. That is coming in on the weekend of the 17th and 18th. So there is that front. All these blue lines, that's essentially the rain-snow line right here where you see that 540, that 540 line. You have to do a little more inspecting because there could be some different temperature changes in the atmosphere. General rule of thumb, though, when you're looking at that chart right there, uh, the 540 decameter thickness line is that quasi, is that kind of the gauge there for the rain-snow line. Anyway, European has the colder air there. Let me get my telestration off so that I can slide this into the future. And then we have a storm system getting going with another round of colder air plunging in. You see it. Snow is snow and ice towards uh, New Orleans, the panhandle of Florida, certainly into Dallas, all the way through Atlanta. Again, that would be an ugly winter storm. I want to caution before we go forward, though. You're going to see a lot of uh, model totals. While we were starting to get in range that we're getting more confidence that there is going to be a pretty significant storm rolling from Texas to Florida into the Carolinas, don't get too hung up on specific model runs yet because uh, the storm is going to come at us in pieces that are still around the world. Uh, and they need to come together into, into the United States. So just be on the lookout. Don't take the numbers that you see with a grain of salt. Look at the pattern. So the European wants it. There it is right there. And then it even goes up into the Northeast. Okay. We're going to go to the GFS now. So one of the things before you start to go crazy, do we have model continuity? There it is again, cold air in place, ice through North Florida, freezing rain in the South Georgia, snow through parts of the Carolinas, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. Uh, that one, that run does not get it into the Northeast. That's going to be a video for another time. Right now, we're going to be focused on here. But again, the two areas, and we'll touch on that quickly. As I say, this it's a story for another time. Uh, here is piece one for the Northeast. There is the storm. Uh, right now, because of the way that that dip in the jet stream is going to be oriented, it kind of kicks it out to sea rather than lifts that area up and pulls it back in. So that's one of the things that we're going to have to watch. The Euro wants a little more phasing or a little more interaction between those two pieces. Um, the GFS does not. That's going to be the main player there. Okay, so we go on to the, where are we at now? The Canadian. Got so many tabs open, if you could see the screen. Uh, we'll take this into the future. There it is again with ice right on down to the Georgia-Florida line, uh, some snow on the colder part of that. The point I want to make is with this is, again, don't get too attached to specific numbers if you're seeing snowfall maps plastered over social media because those are going to change, the windshield wiper effect. Just know we're going to have cold in place all the way down to the Gulf Coast, 
And we're going to have likely another storm developing into that cold to at least give us the shot for some sleet, freezing rain, and some decent snowfall amounts where we typically do not see them. Again, we're going to have details on this every day kind of leading up to this event next week. And again, this is going to be in that ballpark of around the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, moving through the deep south. Um, the one thing, we talk about this a lot through hurricane season, is while we are getting closer in range, is to really not focus on the deterministic models, the single run models that I just showed you. I wanted to show you there that we have model continuity and that there's uh, some shenanigans likely going to be happening into that 21st to 24 time period. It's the ensembles. And what we're looking at here is the GFS ensemble uh, probability for greater than an inch of snow. Uh, the brighter the color, the higher the probability that an inch of snow will fall. So you clearly see here the GFS wants something. I mean, we have super low probabilities, but nonetheless, there are probabilities by uh, about 10%, uh, and that's 10% of the members. So with ensembles, again, if you're not familiar, um, there's 51 members of the European ensemble. We're looking at the GFS right now, but there are different initial conditions put into the model. We do this because we just don't have a lot of data just yet. Pieces, again, of this storm system were kind of scattered throughout the world at this point. They have to come together to create it. So we interject different initial conditions. If we get high probabilities of a storm happening with those different initial conditions, we have more confidence that the event is going to take place. Uh, so 10% of these ensemble members of the GFS are arguing for an inch of snow. Um, as we get into the Texas area up in this area, uh, through the Carolinas, that's where we have probabilities greater than 40%. And then in Southern Virginia, we get into that orange color that's greater than 70%. So with that run and with that package of the ensembles of the GFS, it certainly wants something. Now let's go to the European ensemble and it's the same kind of story. So we do have ensemble members at a decent probability for the range showing up that we're going to have some snow as far south as... I mean, that's a decent probability right there. That's going to be greater than 50% um, through South Central Louisiana into Texas as far south as Houston. And then another decent high probability here. And I mean, right there, that's a 30% shot. 30% of the ensemble members of the European are arguing for an inch of snow. And where they're on the lower side here, remember we saw all that pink, that would be an area for some icing uh, as far south as maybe parts of the panhandle of Florida. So that is going to be something to watch. Um, certainly, if you're a snow lover, it's exciting. But remember, again, we don't handle the snow well in the south. We don't really have uh, the trucks as they do in the north to really clear it in time. So it's kind of crippling. We don't get much. So that is something to watch. We are going to keep you posted. If you are still with me, Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Post what the weather is doing where you are tuning in from. Would love to know that. Uh, it is really cold in the northern tier of the country, and it is going to get colder. Hit that thumbs up button if you're still with me. This is going to be Saturday, January 18th. We talked about this in the yesterday's video, but I wanted to give you another update here of the bitter cold that is going to be spilling into the lower 48. We're going to take it to the 19th now. In the core of that colder air into Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, that is going to push east into Michigan. Look at the temperatures in Detroit when you wake up on Monday, January 20th. We're talking single digits above the windshield, no doubt below zero. Look at that up in International Falls, the Fargo, Willow City, near 30 degrees below zero. Remember, these are the actual air temperatures, not the wind chill. It's going to be much, much colder uh, when you factor that in. It gets even colder in Detroit on Tuesday morning, 6 above, 1 degree below zero in Chicago. That colder air is infiltrating even the Sunshine State uh, as far south as Jacksonville, closing into the freezing mark, uh, Pensacola, Florida, getting into the 20s. And again, this is what kind of sets the stage for that potential snow and ice storm in the south that colder air is going to be situated right there. So we have ingredient number one, the main ingredient, the cold. Now we just need that storm to continue to look likely. If you're rooting for it, again, it's not often the best thing when we get that snow and ice in the south because it does uh, take a lot to remove it, especially when it is that cold. Okay, we're almost out 
of the critical fire danger. Almost. We still have Tuesday to go and we still have Wednesday to go. I think by Thursday, we are going to start to see the winds back off to finally allow firefighters that have been working very, very hard. And thank you for everything that you guys and gals are doing out there to fight these ridiculous fires that have done so much damage and taken life. Um, Santa Ana winds are going to back off a little bit. Right now, we have a big chunk of high pressure out over the Atlantic, and we have low pressure kind of off the Baja Peninsula of California. That is inducing that wind out of the north-northeast over the mountains. When you get that down-sloping effect again, it helps the wind to speed up, dry out, and warm up, and that is what has been the fuel here. You see that critical fire danger, uh, the extremely critical fire danger, those PDS red flag warnings. That's something you certainly don't hear every day. Typically, that PDS, particularly dangerous situation, has been held for uh, tornado outbreak days. But um, that language has been used a couple of times when those red flag warnings, the extreme fire danger warnings, have been issued by the National Weather Service. So again, that critical stays with us as we get into the next couple of days. Current fires, again, this is the satellite picking up on that, the gray representing the smoke, the red representing the hot spots there, and certainly we still have several big fires burning. I think once we get into maybe late Wednesday night, but especially on Thursday, firefighters might be able to get the upper hand here, at least Mother Nature going to start cooperating a little bit. So here we go through the afternoon, Wind gusts anywhere from 20 to 30 miles an hour in the higher elevations in the mountains. Those are going to be much, much higher. Now on Wednesday, again, you see those winds start to crank up once again. This is going to be early on Wednesday morning and then into the afternoon where you see the reds and you see the browns. That's going to be wind gusts topping 40 to 50 miles an hour. You see in San Fernando, 35 mile per hour wind gust. Again, not the best thing again when you're dealing with all those uh, with that very dry tinder and certainly very large active fires but it's the wind direction still that continues to be coming off and down the mountains that will keep drying things out we'll take you further out in time this is going to be eight o'clock and on your wednesday evening we're still gusty and then finally 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 there we go as we get into thursday afternoon much, much better. And we also have a wind direction change. You see those arrows off of the Pacific. Um, that is going to be a hugely welcome change because not only is the wind going to die down, we have uh, it coming from a moisture source and not the desert and down sloping winds to dry out and warm up that wind uh, that is really fueling these terrible, terrible fires in Southern California. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for being here. If you found this content helpful, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. We are, I think, I'm biased, but the best weather uh, team on the internet, I'm including you guys in that. I'm including you guys because we are very active in the conversations that we have uh, with you guys and back at us. We love that here. Uh, we love to have the interactivity. We love to have the conversation. Love to know your thoughts on the Southern Snowstorm. We'll keep you updated here. Again, we are a team of certified and expert meteorologists, not just people screaming to the hills that, oh my gosh, the world is ending. We're going to break it down with sound science and meteorology and maybe uh, you'll take away something from that, uh, some a science lesson, if you will. We love that stuff here. So if you're a fan of that and you want to hang out with us and have a place to talk the weather, you've come to the right place. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. Thumbs up as well. Would love that. And we will catch you next time.